Finally, after more than a year of this pandemic, there is actually very good news. In short, vaccines are working, and not just a little bit, but amazingly well. And more and more of them are coming online. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccines were approved for emergency use in December. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is looking like it will become available very soon. And several other vaccine candidates, like those being developed by AstraZeneca and Novavax, are moving through the authorization pipeline. And now, with millions of people vaccinated, it's worth celebrating that these medical breakthroughs, characterized by the fastest vaccine developments in the history of humankind, are doing what they're supposed to. Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this Data Byte episode, we're going to look to see why the data available to us about the COVID-19 vaccines is worth celebrating. And to cut to the punchline, it's very, very good news. There's a lot of data being thrown around to look at vaccine efficacy, and we need to make sure we're focusing on what really matters. So, in this episode, rather than harping on infection rates, something we've been hearing about on a daily basis, I want to focus on disease consequences. To be sure, infection rates are really important, but if infections don't lead to severe outcomes, then they aren't that big of a problem. The infection rate for colds is something like three times the number of people in the United States. That is, adults typically get two to three colds per year, a staggeringly high infection rate. And yet we don't really make a big deal about that because the common cold isn't all that dangerous. You rarely have someone hospitalized or die due to a cold. COVID-19, on the other hand, as you likely know all too well, is nothing like the common cold. Somewhere around 5% of all those infected with COVID-19 are hospitalized, and somewhere around 1% of those infected ultimately die. So the reason COVID-19 is such a problem isn't just that it's highly infectious, which it is, but that infections can have dire consequences. Which means we should spend some time looking at those consequences and how vaccines are mitigating them. The best way we can do that at this point is to compare what happened to the 75,000 or so people across the various clinical trials of the recent vaccine candidates to a representative sample of 75,000 American adults. So, of the 75,000 who received a vaccine during the trial periods, though a few did have to get hospitalized at some point, none were still hospitalized 28 days after receiving the vaccinations, and exactly zero died. And that is an amazing result when you compare it to typical American adults. The best estimates I've seen indicate that about 15% of all Americans have been infected with COVID-19 at this point. That works out to 11,250 people out of a typical group of 75,000. And of those, we expect somewhere around 5% or 562 to become hospitalized, and about 1% or 112 to die following infection. Those are staggering differences. Vaccination nearly completely eliminates the risk of hospitalization, and at least given these data, completely eliminates the risk of death. And to put this into perspective a bit more, in a typical flu season, about 100 people out of 75,000 are hospitalized and 15 of those people die. Based on these results, it appears that the vaccines are basically making COVID-19 much less dangerous than even the seasonal flu. That is amazing news we should all be celebrating. To be fair, different vaccines do have different efficacy rates in terms of mitigating infection, but the risk of serious consequences from COVID-19 are all but eliminated following vaccination from any of the options. That's really something that we should be celebrating. So where do we go from here? Put simply, we need to ramp up vaccination rates quickly. With such dramatic positive results, the more people that get vaccinated quickly, the fewer hospitalizations and deaths we'll have. And as I've said before, when my turn is up, I'll be waiting in line for my vaccination. Until then, thank you to all the amazing scientists and technicians who have helped develop these vaccines and are showing us that with their help, the end of the pandemic is in sight. Finally, as always, thanks so much for watching.